Hymenoptera contain the wasps, ants, bees, and sawflies. So they have complete metamorphosis, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. They have two pairs of membranous wings, chewing or chewing and sucking mouth parts. And this is an ant here. Um, many of them have this narrow waist. So the abdomen of the female usually has a saw or piercing organ or a sting. They can be social or solitary. They're wood tunnelers, predaceous, nectar feeding, parasitic, leaf miners, and gall makers. So birch leaf miner is the larva of a small black sawfly. The adult sawfly lays eggs in new leaves. and the larvae emerge and feed on leaf tissues. You can kind of see that right here. It's very tiny, but it's there, leaving blot-shaped or winding brown mines. Mature larvae are flattened and may be up to half an inch long. The larvae drop to the ground. They pupate in the soil for two to three weeks before emerging as adults, and there may be up to four generations per year. So vigorous gray, white, and paper birches are the most commonly attacked. Uh, you know, it's not a really major problem unless it's repeated infestations, and then there's a decline in trees. So you want to encourage predators such as green lacewings and spiders. You can pinch the leaves to kill the larvae on smaller um, infestations. It's actually kind of fun to do that. And then you can plant resistant species and cultivars such as Betula nigra. Elm leaf miner is going to be found on the Camperdown elm. They feed between upper and lower surfaces of the leaves. You get these large brown to gray blotches on the leaves and the damaged leaves will just remain on the tree throughout the growing season, of course, they're not going anywhere. So Scotch, Camperdown, English, and American Elm are going to have this. The adults emerge with the breaking of the leaf buds on most elms. And usually when we have this class face to face, we can catch this happening on the Camperdown Elm on campus. Uh, I was there about two and a half weeks ago. I did not see them yet. So mid-March through mid-April, depending on the temperatures. So they come out between 11 and 1. So we've actually seen them there. And they are female. They begin to lay eggs immediately after they emerge. And the eggs are usually laid near the leaf veins. There are five instars of the larvae. They eventually drop to the ground. They pupate through the summer, fall, and winter. There's only one generation per year. So natural predators can include an assassin bug that might help control populations. You can pinch or pick or destroy infested leaves to kill the larvae. Uh, I can say that most Camperdown elms you're going to see out there will have this, and you know I don't know if there's much you can do about it. So sometimes you'll see galls on roses, and there's two types: spiny rose gall and mossy rose gall. The spiny rose gall is caused by Centipede wasps, they produce small hard caverns that are armed. There's sharp spines on the exterior. This is actually the mossy rose gall in this picture. Here's the spiny rose gall. Usually occur on the surface of the leaves, sometimes on the stems. They don't appear to harm the plant. And this particular, the spiny rose gall, only develops on wild roses. Here it is again. The mossy rose gall can exceed the size of a golf ball. It also appears to be harmless to the plant, but you will see this only on domestic roses. So uh, one is on the wild and one is on the domestic. So they overwinter in galls on rose stems, leaves, buds, and roots. And you can see this is what they look like in cross-section. They emerge in the spring as adults. You want to allow parasites to control the wasp population. You can hand remove or prune galls if aesthetics are a concern, but they're not going to hurt the plant. And I wanted to talk about a good guy here. This is an aphid parasitoid, the Burkhana wasp. 
So the larva hatches and develops inside the aphid, eventually killing it. And actually, I've got a great video on that, so check it out. It's a tiny white grub. Once it develops, it completes, it pupates, and turns the body into a mummy. And this is what the aphids look like. So if you've had aphids, especially on the vine maples, it seems like. There's maple aphids on vine maples. This will be on the underside of the leaves, so take a look out there. I'm sure you're going to see them.